Hey, what's up? This is Raf, and nandito naman ako at para ikay akin pasayahin. Oh baby, now let me warm you up. Baby, please let me love you much. Come on, come on with me, baby. Oh, oh. Never ever leave without me. For today's vlog guys, ay gagawa tayo ng medyo educational siya kasi may nag-request sa akin na mag-content ako ng ganitong content about philosophical of education or the philosophy of education since na malapit na yung licensure examination for teachers. So I think I have the authority to do this content because um, for the information of everyone, I am an education graduate so I think Pinag, uh, pinag, hindi lang I think kasi pinag-aralan namin to ng college so that's my basis to share this so everyone my knowledge about philosophy of education na pwedeng i-apply during licensure examination for teachers na um, kadalasan hindi kadalasan kasi madalas talaga ito uma-appear sa mga ganitong exam for teachers so yung philosophy of education is kailangan hindi natin to memorize yung bawat philosophies. Kasi hindi ka naman tatanungin sa board exam or ng PRC kung ano yung meaning ng ganitong philosophy. So, kailangan lang dapat ay may idea tayo sa bawat philosophy na um, sa bawat philosophy na ating pinag-aaralan. So, since mayroon ka ng idea the, uh, about the concepts of the different philosophy of education, so, pwede na natin itong i-apply during examination at I'm sure makakasagot ka na kung anong itatanong sa'yo ng PRC. So, after this discussion, I wanna share to you um, some tips and questions how to tra attack the questions, some questions na pwede natin i-apply during licensure examination for teachers na malapit na. So, let's get started. So, first, philosophy of education is idealism. So, when we say idealism, the key word natin is idea, mind, and spirit. So, since it is an idea, so kung iniisip no, mo na papasa ka sa board examination or magtatap ka sa board examinations for teacher, yes, papasa ka kasi ito ang sinasabi ni idealism. Kung iniisip mo, because it's something to do with your mind. And papasok din dito si spirit. It's something to do with our values. Ito yung kasalungat ni idealism. Ito ay si realism. Si realism ay yung clue word natin is something real. So ito si realism ay hindi lang siya naniniwala kung kapag wala siyang ebidensya. Kailangan mayroong uh, palaging nakikita or something tangible na nahahawakan with our use of our senses. Ito si realism. Next naman is pragmatism. So, ang keyword natin is practice. Again, practice. Pragmatism, practice. Pragmatism, sinasabi dito, lahat ng ating knowledge, it should be put into action. At doon na lalabas ang ating skills. Next is essentialism. So, essentialism, our um, keyword there is essential. So, the teacher should teach only the important to the students or the basic, the fundamentals. Or the teacher should only teach the common body of knowledge. So, that's the essence of essentialism. So, what are those common body of knowledge? So, papasok ka dun sa yung three R's natin. Yung reading, writing, and arithmetic. So, ito, itong tatlo ay ito yung lumang common body of knowledge. So, mayroon na tayong um, new updated um, body of common body of knowledge. It is based on the K-12 curriculum, which is the 7 C's. So, ano itong 7 C's? Computer skills, um, collaboration skills, cross-cultural skills, and communication skills, at iba pa. Next natin ay si perennialism. Si perennialism, or narinig niyo na ba yung, yung praise na, is this something perennial? Or nangyari na ba ito ulit? Kasi yung keyword natin is 
sa perennialism is being perennial or state of being perennial. Kasi sa per- si perennialism, it, it is something that unchanging. Hindi siya nagbabago. Um, an example natin dito ay yung Bible. Yung Bible kasi, um, hindi siya nagbabago. Nagkakaroon lang siya ng mga revisions. Kung mas lalo pa natin itong, para mas lalo pa natin itong maintindihan. At saka, yung another example din is yung Quran ng mga Muslim. Kasi, um, ginawa ko itong example kasi this Bible and Quran, um, hindi siya nagbabago yung idea sa isang situation sa Bible. Um, may nagkakaroon lang siya ng revisions. Um, binab- um, re- revised lang siya ng author para mas lalo pa natin siyang maintindihan ng maigi. Existentialism. So, yung keyword natin dito is existence. So, anong situation ang nag apply sa existentialism? So, example natin dito yu- ay yung pagpili mo ng, ng, ng course or program nung college ka. It is your choice. It is your freedom to choose what would be your direction or path na tatahakin. So, kasi sa existentialism, it's more on self-choice. Self, self, self lang siya. So, kay, um, papasok din dito yung ating personal thoughts, personal stands, or personal opinion. Because it's our choice. It's our own. So, another example of existentialism ay yung pagpili natin ng sagot sa board examination. Kasi, tayo naman talaga yung pipili. It's our choice kung ano yung isasagot natin doon. At yun si existentialism. Progressivism. Progressivism is something that is development or progress. The word, the key word there is progress. Because it's something that has changed or nagbago or may nabago. So, ano kaya yung situa- situation yung dapat um, i-apply sa progressivism na na concept. So, for example, the phrase strike the iron while it's hot. What does it mean? Meaning, kung si teacher ay papasok na classroom na mayroon kang naririnig or yung pinag-uusapan ng mga estudyante mo, it's all about um, mobile legend. So, si teacher ay gagawa ng paraan kasi yung yung pinag-usapan nila, yung main topic sa classroom talaga is about mobile legend. So, para si teacher ay mapansin or yes, mapansin ng mga sudyante. So, gagawa si teacher ng isang um, concepts or na kanyang strategies sa teaching na ma-apply yung concepts of mobile legend para yung interest ng student ay nasa sayo na. So, ganun yung process ng progressivism. Kung ano yung trend ay susundin mo. Kung ano yung um, nauuso sa mga estudyante ay dapat mo rin um, sundin para um, ka para maging yung yung lesson mo ay maging interesting kasi doon napapasok yung interest ng student kung um, yung topic mo is nakaka-relate sila in their real life situation. Social reconstructivism. So, iisa-isahin natin si social muna. So, when we say social, it's something to do with the society. So, si reconstructivism naman, it's something to do with change or nagbabago. So, si social reconstructivism, it's um, something that is change in society. So, kung naalala nyo ba yung ating mga syudad noon, ay, ay hindi pa marami yung mga buildings Diba? So, pagdating ng panahon, dumami na yung mga buildings sa isang syudad na yon. So, it's something that has changed in society. Uh, sa pagdating ng panahon, the product of social reconstructivism. Constructivism. So, yung keyword natin din is construct. To construct or to create. Si constructivism, it's Something that we are going to create our own knowledge, we are going to create our own concepts or topic or situation na based in our past experiences. So, ano yung tawag sa mga past experience na yon? So, dito na papasok si Eskema. Hinduism. 
Sa Hinduism, it's selfish. And si utilitarianism naman, it is selfless. So, I know ang kanilang pagkakaiba. So, example. Yung teacher ay binigyan ng death threat ng parent. Kung hindi niya ipasa yung kanyang estudyante, ay papatayin siya. So, uh, may pinagpipilian doon sa board exam. Um, ipapasa mo ba ang estudyante or hindi? So, yung pinagpipilian ito. Yes, why to suffer the threat? Ang ikalawang yes ay yes, it is um, it will be the use of the student and the teacher. So, saan doon ang nag apply ng theory or, or philosophy of Hinduism? Siyempre, yung isang yes na ang sagot, yes, why to suffer the threat? Kasi, yung um, principle of Hinduism, it's um, being selfish. Bakit naman ako uh, magsasuffer, uh, bakit ako magsasuffer sa threat na yun kung pwede ko namang ipasa yung sudyante ko? Diba? It's something that is being selfish. Paano naman kung utilitarianism ang approach? So, yung isasagot natin doon sa board exam ay yung isang yes na ang explanation niya ay yes, it will be the use of the student and the parents. So, laging tandaan, ang utilitarianism ay selfless at ang Hinduism ay selfish. Again, Hinduism is self selfish, utilitarianism ay selfless. Finally, ang last is nationalism. So, ang nationalism ay very self-explanatory lang to kasi when we say nationalism, it's something to do with the country. Love of country. So, let's repeat the philosophy of education that we've discussed earlier. So, first is idealism. When we say idealism, something to do with your mind, thinking, cognitive. Yan, papasok din yung values. Another is realism. Realism is kasalungat ni idealism. Si realism is something to do with real, tangible, real objects. Five senses, nakikita. Ganon. At saka pragmatism, the keyword is practice. Practice, practice, pragmatism. Another one is essentialism. From the word itself, essential, essential basic, fundamentals, three R's. What are those? Um, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Yan ang dapat ituturo ng teacher na essentialist. So, next is cranialism. Something that is unchanging. Hindi nagbabago. Example, Bible, Quran. Sila yung mga examples ng piranialism na hindi nagbabago. But, it should be, it could be revised by the author. Para mas lalo maintindihan ng nagbabasa or mas lalo maintindihan ng karamihan. So, that is the concept of perennialism. Another is existentialism. Yung existentialism is your own choice. Choice mo na magtitake ng board exam. Choice mo na hindi magtitake ng board exam. At saka choice mo yung ikaw mismo yung sasagot sa board examination. At saka choice mo rin na um, teacher or education yung kinuha mong kurso nung nasa college ka pa. Yan ang concept ng existentialism. So, remember the word choice. Your freedom. Another is progressivism. The term this is progress, development, change. When is, there is a development, there is a change. So, remember the term strike the iron while it's hot. So, alam nyo na yun. Kung ano yung interest ng bata, yun ang sundin para, yun, para nandun sa yun yung focus ng bata. Yan ang dapat gagawin ng isang progressivist teacher. So next is social reconstructivism. When we say social, terms in society. Reconstructivism, it's something to do with changing. So social reconstructivism, remember, change in society. Next is the Hinduism and utilitarianism. Yung Hinduism is self, self, selfish, at saka yung utilitarian, utilitarianism ay selfless. Constructivism. So, the word there is construct or create. You need to create something out of your knowledge. Nationalism. Nationalism means love of your country, love of the country. So, let's practice. Um, I prepared here um, different questions about board exams na maray natin lalabas din to ngayong board exam kasi itong question na to ay lumabas din to sa previous board exam. So, um, it is based on my 
resources sa aking researches sa aking pag um sa saliksik na sana makatulong din sa inyo at you have you are free to pause this video para sa mga taong nangangailangan ng question na to para masulat nila so question number one is when we teach our objections to abortion and arbitrage bill our own thoughts goes with a essentialism b progressivism c pragmatism and d existentialism so Try to analyze first the question before attacking to the answer. Kasi marami nagkakamali, ah, sasagot na lang sasagot. Doon sila nagkakamali na yung pinili nila ay hindi yung tamang sagot. So kailangan isipin muna na mabuti, intindihin muna mabuti yung questions bago sumagot. So yung sinasabi dito is, this, uh, this question trying to say to us is, ano yung, sari- yung sarili nating objection sa tungkol sa abortion and RH bill? So, ano sa, ta- sa palagay ninyo sa pinagpipilian yung mayroong own stand about this certain issue? Meaning, sarili, your own. Si essentialism ba? Si progressivism ba? Si pragmatism ba? Or si existentialism ba? Analyze. So, basically, if may sagot ka na, yes, tama ka, because ang sagot ay existentialism. Bakit sinasabing existentialism ang sagot? Kasi, yung question, sinasabi, your own thought. Your own thought about abortion and marriage bill. So, sis, existentialism lamang ang may sarili, or yung meaning ng existentialism if nakinig ka kanina it's self choice your choice your own stand your own to- thought about this particular issue that is why the answer is existentialism second question is which educational philosophy is achieved when the teachers is able to develop intrinsically motivated learners through experimental learning so a Essentialism, B. Constructivism, C. Behaviorism, D. Progressivism. So try to analyze again the question before attacking to the right answer. Because ma- baka tayo magkamali at sayang yung point sa board exam. So hanapin muna yung keyword dito sa question. So yung keyword dito natin ay to develop intrinsically motivated learners. Kasi yung method of experimental um, learning, pwede rin iba ito. Or, so, mahalaga na dyan ay motivated ang learners. So, kailangan makuha mo na talaga yung interest ng bata or ng estudyante mo. So, remember yung sinabi ko kanina, strike the iron when it's hot. So, kailangan kunin mo muna yung interest ng bata para nasa yun na ang focus. So, kung ano yung gusto ng bata, for example, yung mobile legend na sinasabi ko kanina, so, dapat, yung mobile legend na pinag-uusapan ng mga learners mo ay dapat ma-relate mo sa klase in real life situation para pag mag-discuss ka in front of the class, nasa yun na ang focus or attention ng bata. So, nakuha mo na yung interest nila. So, sa question number 2, alin dito ang mayroong interest or yes, mayroong interest na nagpapahiwatig sa ating question na nandyan sa pinagpipilian. So, basically, if my answer ka na, yes, again, tama ka kasi the answer is progressivism. After listening to the priest about the morality, John has a moment of reflection. His understanding about morality has become deeper as he relates to his past experience. A. Essentialism B. Constructivism C. Behaviorism and B. Progressivism So, alam ko dyan sa iba, ang isasagot nila ay idealism. Kasi may value. Tandaan ng mabuti, hindi lahat ng question na ma- about value ay ang sagot ay idealism. Try to analyze 
the question before attacking to the right answer. Palagi ko yung sinasabi kasi I'm sure magkakamali ka kung isasagot mo kaagad yung mali mong sagot. Kailangan analyze muna bago sagot kasi sayang yung points. So, palaging tandaan talaga, analyze the question before um, isulat ang tamang sagot. So, analyze first. Ano yung ginagawa ni Jan? <clears throat> so, si Jan, ay, ay, after niya nakinig sa priest, ay nagkaroon siya ng um, a momentum to think deep the meaning of morality. So, after niya nakapag-think na siya, so, he create or construct or develop a new meaning of morality. So, ano dyan? Yung tamang sagot na nagsasabi na mayroon siyang um, nakuhang bago. So, na, na, nakuha niyang bago para um, yung kanyang kaalaman about morality ay mas pinalawak pa niya, ginawa niyang bago. So, basically, the answer to this question is constructivism. Yes, tama ka po. Which philosophy of education is achieved when a teacher mainly focuses on developing essential skills and basic literacy? Of course, very um, obvious the question there. Mayroon siyang keyword na essential skills. Ano da, i- i-markahan mo yung essential skills and the basic literacy. Markahan mo siya at saka hanapin sa pinagpipilian yung, yung tamang sagot. So, yung sa pagpipilian ay essentialism, constructivism, behaviorism, and progressivism. So, alin dito ang mayroon essential skills at basic literacy? Of course, the answer is essentialism. When the teacher is convinced that he's best to teach the students the skills to adapt to change since change is the only thing permanent in this world, he subscribes to which philosophy of education? So A. Essentialism B. Existentialism C. Idealism D. Pragmatism So, alam ko ngayon ang iniisip ng iba kasi my word na change, the answer is progressivism. So, again, try to analyze the question before come to come up a answer. Kasi kakamali ka talaga. Sayang yung point sa board exam, saya. Malay mo itong point na to ang magpapakasa sa iyo sa board examination. So, try to analyze. Ano nga ba ang ginagawa dito? sa question na to. Ganito lang ako mag-attack ng question kapag magsasagot ako ng mga questions, especially sa board exam. So, yung primary nating um, situation dito ay yung ginamit mo, yung, sa, yung sarili mong skills uh, para maka-adapt ka sa skills or maka-adapt ka sa change. Meaning, pre-nactis mo yung skills at you put into action yung skills para maka-adapt ka sa pagbabago or sa change. Sa change, I mean. So, alin dito sa pinagpipilian ang mayroon um, actions? You put into action. So, basically, the answer is yes, tama ka, is prag- ma- Last question is, which philosophy has the educational objectives to indoctrinate Filipinos to accept the teaching of Catholic Church which is foster faith in God? So A. Social Reconstructivism B. Behaviorism C. Idealism and D. Pragmatism So again, analyze the question before um, going to the right answer. So, the situation is gusto nitong iparating na kailangan ma-indoctrinate ng mga Filipino yung teachings of the Catholic or the Church, Catholic Church, I mean. 
So ano po ba yung mga um, yung mga teachings of Catholic Church? So dito na papasok si values at isisinggit natin yung spirit. So alin dito sa pinagtipilian ang mayroong values, mayroong spirit? The answer is, of course, obviously, idealism. So that's it for today's uh, video. Sana marami kayong natutunan na uh, learnings for this video. If um, gusto niyo pa, gumawa pa ako ng panibagong video about licensure examination for teachers, just comment down below at gagawa ako agad-agad. So, get blessed, your journey, future teachers, and see you sa oath taking. So, bye bye, guys! Oh, baby, now, let me warm you up. Baby, please.